everybody. I'm Bob Odenkirk. You might know me from Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad or Mr. Show or a lot of other things uh, where I've acted. Uh, I have the lucky pleasure to speak to two of my favorite actresses in the world right now uh, and talk about their show that they created that is my favorite, currently my favorite TV show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pen 15. <laughs> Pen 15. And I'm here with Anna Conkle and Maya Erskine. And uh, hi, guys. How are you? Hi. Good. Hanging in thank there. You for kindest, kindest bunch of words. Some. Yeah, thank you for that intro. <laughs> well, there's more to come. My daughter teases me that my favorite things are all things that are made for 13-year-old girls. <laughs> <laughs> Is she 13? No, she's 20. Not age? Oh, okay. <laughs> but she loves your show, too. Look, there's a million reasons why I love your show so much. Uh, your performances can be the lead reason for the sake of SAG. <laughs> <laughs> your performances are flawless, and you're channeling uh, a young person at that age. And the tribute to your performance is what you've heard uh, by now many times, which is that when describing the show, People can't help but characterize uh, it as these two actresses, adults, wrote a show about being 13 and they play the 13-year-olds and they're surrounded by 13-year-olds. And it immediately sounds almost like a gag that you're just going to play with and prank on. And it's be, and it almost as quickly as you start watching it becomes meaningless that you are 30-year-old women playing 13 year old girls you you are those girls you are that age i believe you i believe you in that world and i know you've gotten this compliment before and i'll give it to you again the trick uh, of that disappears very very quickly when you start watching the show and you get wrapped up in the characters and their feelings and you 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 have to remind yourself that um, these are actresses who are a different age than the characters they're playing and how uh, I, of course everybody wonders how it started i can only picture you two meeting in amsterdam mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah at acting school yeah we we met our junior year of college and we were studying experimental theater in amsterdam and i immediately had a huge talent crush on maya and then Amsterdam was over this really amazing program with like 20 of us or so. And that summer we were going into our senior year and we just became best friends. I mean, pretty, pretty quickly. And so it didn't start with making work. It was just a friendship and going through stuff. And, and so after school, you know, there was just a time of figuring a long time of figuring out what we wanted to do, I think. And, and writing together eventually came out of a deep depression. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me moving to LA to do theater there. Cause I wasn't getting any work in New York for us to be like, okay, now we have to write together, even though we live in separate places. So we started writing over Skype. Yeah. Um, and Anna really pushed for it and pushed me to do it. And I'm so grateful for that. I was the uh, most we, <laughs> You know, I think a lot of people, especially right now, wonder what the value of uh, attending college is at all. So, um, but in this case, it sounds like you maybe got a lot out of that college experience. Besides for your friendship, it sounds like you stretched yourselves as performers. It revealing itself now, I feel like the effects of our education, because I think right after graduating, it felt like there was no uh, transition into getting jobs or being able to work, but we had all this training. And so it was sort of this odd thing of how do we now put this to work? And so it was a lot of figuring out, like, do we write together and and do we create or do we just keep trying to audition? And so we kind of went the auditioning route for a long time, which didn't really get us anywhere. And so that's where we took it into our own hands. And I think what the training did is we learned a lot of how to write and create your own work and collaborate. And probably I would say the other best thing to come out of that was all the connection, all the friendships. So there's so many people from that school that we still 
work with out here in LA. We've, we've found our soulmates in art. So there was sort of this community that we built, which was really important, I think, when we first moved out here. Hey, what? <laughs> let's talk about mask work. <laughs> <laughs> I think when people, even actors, even actors, uh, when they hear, oh, we're going to, you know, mask work or something right. elemental like that, the things you do in class. Right, right. They go, I mean, I, I get how a lot of people look at that and go, oh, my God, you're jerking each other off. And what's the point of that? I, I'm sure that the props and the makeup help you to be these characters. Well, that was a big part of it. Cause so I started in, in musical theater in school, which that did not work out clearly well at all. And then going to experimental theater was all about, and my correct me if I'm wrong, cause you did this much longer than me, but like physically adjusting yourself from the outside and letting that inform what happened, what's happening inside. And that was a totally new concept for me. I'm someone super heady and, you know, the other methods of just journaling as your character and, you know, you, it's, it's a completely different way in and that it, it, you're speaking to the same thing, I think. And it takes for pen 15 in terms of like going from the outside in, I do relate to that a lot, actually, of just feeling physically in that, you know, character and then. And then being like, I, I hope this is enough and just committing, <laughs> committing to that. Well, it totally informs so much of the, and I, I'm, I'm the same way. Like I think outward in is, is for me how I work best because if, if I have like the minute I put the wig on, it changes my feelings inside. Like it, it makes me want to go like this. It makes me want to jump out wild. It, it's, it is like mask work. And I feel oh like. God. I was so scared of acting actually in school in front of classmates. That was like, I was always the last to go up. I hated um, having to perform in front of my peers because I was so worried about what they would think. And when I put the mask on, it felt like I was hiding behind this creature that then I could become. And I was no longer me trying to do anything. So it's the same thing, I think. Yeah, with like putting... And when we have to hold our bodies a certain way, it it just changes everything for you. Um, so I do think hair, makeup, wardrobe, all of that is like vital. <laughs> Let me just go back to what I was when I was asking you how it all started. I could only picture you two improvising or goofing around as these girls. Uh, does any of that happen in the writing or, or Wendy Vickany episode 203, when you find the piece of, of the card, the business card, how much of that is uh, left to the moment? That, that moment in particular was written yeah. and based on vaguely based on an experience. I mean, Maya and I both pretended to be witches when we were little and there's a lot of overlap and yin and yang experiences when we look back on our life interestingly but that ex that that moment was kind of based on find with a friend back in the day finding a um business card in a mailbox and being like this is mother witch so but i think what maya and i and maya really is a muse for me i think but i have comfort in embracing the small weird moments with Maya and putting it on the page because they feel important enough to each other. Whereas maybe before I wouldn't have had the confidence to be like, this is, this is a weird moment. Maybe on the page, is it going to read that this is like a, a legitimately emotional, funny thing? Is it just going to seem trite and right. weird and not important enough? You know what I mean? But yeah. And so that might be a reason why some of those moments feel like that's got to be like improv, you know, but, but there is a fair amount of just in the moment. I mean, I'd say maybe 10% a day, Maya, would you say? Yeah. 10 to 20%. Yeah. And, and it's mostly yeah. <clears throat> not through, I feel like the improv happens if we run into trouble with scenes sometimes, if on yeah. the day we're having trouble like it doesn't feel right, right. then we yes. try a couple runs of improv, but it always goes off the rails. So some, and then sometimes we stick to the script and then have moments surprise us, you know, that come up. Um, but I feel like the same thing applies in writing. It's, you know, 
we generally don't improvise in the room writing unless it's a scene that we're kind of struggling with where right. it's like, okay, how would we actually talk like this? Because generally it's coming from memories from both of us, from other writers. Um, so it's easy to sort of translate and put onto the page. Uh, right. I will say something that's probably a little frustrating about our writer's room, I would guess, but I don't know because I haven't been in others, is that Maya and I are always in the room. <laughs> so it's a pro and a con in the sense that we are the characters and we get to rewrite in the moment or co-write, you know, every line of it feeling as organic to our characters and to the moment as, and our memory of being 13 as we can. Right. Let's talk about that for a second, because for me, uh, I, the hardest thing about playing Saul Goodman or Jimmy McGill in Better Call Saul is he's he's just much younger than me. And mm -hmm. I mean, he literally is I mean, 20 years younger, maybe and maybe even. Emotionally, I I almost <laughs> think he's 30 or 40 years younger than me. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's that's really hard. That's a harder than anything else. A lot of the problems that the girls uh, are confronting are not problems to an adult <laughs> mm -hmm. because we right. get better right. at compartmentalizing and, and sort of stomping on our feelings because we can't live that way because you can't yeah. go through life as a 13 year old person, 14, that time period is so you're just a raw nerve yeah, and you don't know what the next step is going to be or bring. And you just can't go through life that way. So you, at some point, we start to deaden that nerve and we mm -hmm. start to have sort of a weird blind faith. Maybe it's just a mulish ignorance uh, mm. about possibilities instead of that open-hearted, open-minded feeling that you go through in that transformational time. I don't know what's wrong with us, but for that, I feel like most people, most sane people have shut that part off completely mm -hmm. to just, just forget it and, and sort of black that out. But I feel like Anna and I, a lot of what we connected over, even just in college, separate yeah. of Pen15, all of our stories of trauma or embarrassment or shame were like right at the surface and mm -hmm. we would talk about it endlessly with each other. So I think we already shared so many stories and we probably each on our own talked about these memories a lot because that was such a seminal time for me and, mm -hmm. and a hard raw time that I always went back to. So I feel like, you know, when you say Bob, that you are also 14 in a way, like I, I think Anna and I, in some ways are that age still, like there is a part of us that it's so easy to go back mm -hmm. to that time um yeah emotionally and you know yeah. Uh, yeah yeah and I relate to the raw nerve aspect so much and still now as an adult and and having to learn how to cope with being a really really sensitive person you know yeah. and that connecting me to age 13 and to every moment unfortunately of my life where I feel shame or rejection or whatever. And that's something yeah. that Maya and I could always not only talk about, but laugh at, you know, right. just think is the funniest, darkest stuff. <laughs> and the sad, like I could cry and hysterically laugh at the same time with Maya and my friendship, whether we're talking about 13 or 25 or yesterday, you right. know, and that is something that she found important to bring to our work. And I found important to bring to our work. So, um, we're so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And Anna, you know, my, um, my family situation was uh, a tenuous one, that feeling that your character has of just, and it's a wonderful scene where the two girls are watching TV and there's an argument, a family argue, of parents are arguing in the next room. Mm -hmm. And that just reminded me <laughs> of my whole childhood of this big mm. danger that you mm. cannot control, that you have no power over. It's a beautiful, sad, and and wonderful thing that you uh, bring to the screen. Um, 
Thank you. Is it hard to to feel those feelings sometimes to willingly put yourself in that place? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are certain scenes. I, and I think maybe we all feel like that. And you're speaking to that of of where you're like, I don't want to do this today. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, and suddenly you're on your mark and it's action and you're just doing it. Well, you do those moments beautifully, and I think they're the best things about acting. They're the greatest achievements in acting to me. Um, Mm -hmm. Can we talk about your mom for a second, Maya? Yes. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to say your name, Mutsko. Mutsko. Mutsko, but we call her Mutsi. My dad calls her Mutz. Mutsi? That's great. Mm -hmm. What a brave choice to have your mother play your mother. (laughs) Now, is she... Anybody who watches for any length of time is going to think she's got to have acting experience. Absolutely none. I mean, she's always, she's been surrounded by artists her whole life. Like my dad is a jazz musician and she always sort of supported him and went on tour with him. And, um, you know, her job before all of this was she was an interpreter for bands in Japan. And so I just feel like she's always been kind of, like on the side, uh, supporting artists, um, but never acknowledging or accessing what she has naturally. So when I feel very lucky though, because when we were auditioning, you know, we had, um, we were making the pilot presentation first. And when we sent out short, yeah, yeah, 15 minute, half a pilot and, um, no one wanted to audition for it. They thought it was utter crap and thought it was inappropriate. And I mean, it was, you know, it was an odd thing to get, I think in script form. And so um, the people who did audition for my mom weren't authentically from Japan. And I think we all felt immediately that that just wasn't going to work as well. So we tried my mom and thank God Anna and Sam we're open to that because it was a bit of risk. <laughs> well, your mom's amazing. We can't, I, I just, I can't, it doesn't make any sense how good she doesn't. is. <laughs> it training. doesn't. She's great. Um, now, Mo, you have some other wonderful, many, many wonderful actors, and mm-hmm. I'm going to mention a few of them now, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now, I've always loved Melora Walters, uh-huh. and in fact, did a movie with her years ago that I directed and she did a part in it. Thank you. She was very generous to do that. And she's just a wonderful actress who couldn't be more perfectly playing this role. We were so lucky that we got, I I didn't think that she would say yes. Like I couldn't believe that we got her. And I just, I actually re was watching Magnolia recently Mm -hmm. and she's just, so incredible. Like I, I just am feeling, you know, very grateful that we get to have her play your mom. Yeah. The role was offered and we were like, wait, she said, yes. <laughs> we were so- I mean, <laughs> thank God. Thank God. The yeah. hardest part is that a role, if you're an actor, the first thing you see, the first episode, I mean, how much does the mom matter? She's just right. arguing. Right. It's only when you get into season two where Melora really gets to go deeper and show a more that just Mm -hmm. she's amazing in this role. Yeah. She's talking about a raw nerve, like someone. And I think that's a lot of the, the, the challenge in the casting of pen 15 of like, how do we make this not TV? Why haven't, you know, why is this popular person? Not just like the popular person or the dork dork or whatever, like what's the gray area. And I think what's a challenge for actors when they're auditioning for us probably is that, these characters are amalgams of memories of other people that we knew. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like one person. It's like a mixture of someone that Anna knew and a mixture of someone that I knew that was, you know, bossy or did these things. And so to actually cast that and find a person who uh, Satisfies satisfies all of us, it has to have that complex depth that they're bringing that isn't on the page. Yeah, and I think you guys set that tone, and it's interesting to see that these young people uh, are able to grasp it, that you've found some amazing young talent. I know they want me to wrap up, but I have to talk about Sam Zwibbelman for a Mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Uh, He is a co-writer, right? Yeah, co-creator. And a director, and a wonderful directing. Mm -hmm. And I just want to point out his directing 
so much of what's great about the show is just dependent, mm -hmm. dependent on a director feeling it, mm -hmm. seeing it, knowing where to put the camera and bringing a tone and an energy to the set that allows the actor uh, space to um, live in the moment and, mm -hmm. and reveal those feelings. Can you talk about Sam and how you met him and just what he does on set and how do you interact? We, Anna and I came to him when we were sort of trying to come up with a show and we had seen his films from before he was in our friend group and we had always admired his work. And so we asked him to collaborate with us essentially. And we formed this show, Pen15. Um, you know, he's such an incredible writer and that's, you know, where we first came to him, but then we also realized he's an, you know, insane director and really just so knowledgeable about everything. And so his, his point of view is like, can be, I would say like godlike funny sometimes, like truly like at, like dying on the floor, laughing, <laughs> insane humor. And then incredibly uh, deep and and sincere and soulful and heartfelt and very, I would say he's a very sensitive person as well. Like all three of us are highly sensitive people. And so coming together, I think he, he, um, he just was in this world immediately, I would say, and has been such a, a good um, partner in terms of when we're on set being the eye and letting us play, you know, he, that's all he really wants on every, in every scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a real connection. I think, uh, you know, from the beginning of working together between the three of us of the same thing we're talking about between me and Maya of like a reverence for the minutia of like, the intricacy of your feelings, you know, that get overlooked, especially get overlooked at age 13, that uh, certainly they can't be experiencing, you know, something super complex. And we know from going through it, like you can, and you do. So there's a reverence for that. And I think he, he always pushed in a good way. Um, that, that, that instinct that we all already had of this is, you know, this is important. We all love Todd Salons, who, I mean, talk about giving reverence to, you know, the coming of age perspective and acknowledging a beauty to it. And then also a deep humor and, and rawness to it. And so he brings all of that to directing. And that's not necessarily the instinct of, you know, every comedy director. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we've been, yeah. been a gift. Yeah. He's, he's gifted. And I yeah. hope that everyone in your cast and all the writing and everything about the show, and it seems like people are, you know, gradually appreciating it and seeing it and knowing it and grasping how wonderful it is. I knew right from the start. <laughs> <laughs> you were our number one fan. You were. Beginning, which we yeah. couldn't believe. We were like, yeah. wait. He likes our show. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, we've, we've I been love your fan for a long, long, long. Yeah. Long. I think my previous favorite show was Catastrophe. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I watched it. It's great. So good. Another great show. Uh, but uh, this is just a beautiful show. Thank you for making Pen15. And mm. thank you for your performances. Uh, and I hope that all awards go to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you yeah. so, so, so Thank much. Thank you.